KVV Live on the Internet. Tom Cantor comes from a long line of Orthodox rabbis, but the Messiah made him a friend of God. Hi, I'm Tom Cantor. Picture yourself waiting for your friend to arrive at the airport. Your eyes pass from person to person. Suddenly, eyes meet, you smile, you found your friend. If that person was God, would you both say friend? Join me to start or deepen your personal friendship with God. Don't miss Friendship with God every weekday afternoon at 5 p.m. on KKVB. Hello, this is A.J. the Right Reverend Rhino Watkins, the host of the Hallelujah Holla Show right here on KKVB, 1060 a.m. from 7 to 7.30 p.m. every Sunday evening where the Word of God is given to you in such a way where our mantra is revelation, reconciliation, and restoration. Join us every Sunday, 7 to 7.30 p.m. on KKVB Las Vegas. Before driving on busy freeways, know which ones are open with no construction, no accidents. It's possible now with the Nevada Department of Transportation's 511 travel information. Just dial 511 or visit NevadaDOT.com. Sponsored by NDOT and in cooperation with the Nevada Broadcaster Association and the state. Welcome to Open Book Radio Club, a membership program of like-minded people. Your words should be heard to increase awareness of what you do. Become a part of a growing community and let Open Book Radio Club highlight you. Well, hello, everyone. We are here again, and you know this is Open Book Radio Club. It is 2.02, and we are talking to you. Remember, if you have a book, music, or a business, we want you on our show. So go to www.openbookradioclub.com and leave a message. And I do want to thank Connie because she did exactly that, and we have her scheduled to be speaking on the 21st of December. So see, it does work. Connie, thank you for going to Open Book Radio Club and leaving your message, and we will be interviewing you very, very soon. I want to welcome my guest. This is his second time, and pretty soon I won't have to say that because you will know who he is when he starts speaking. BZ is now the new co-host for Open Book Radio Club, and we're happy to have him here. So, BZ, why don't you give everybody the telephone numbers, which is posted right there. I know you're new. That's why I'm showing you. Give everybody the telephone numbers before the show starts so they can call in if they choose to. Well, if you're calling locally, call 702. 650-KKVV or 5588. If you're calling long distance, call toll-free at 1-800-366-8883 or listen online live at kkvv.com and watch us while you're at it. There you go. We are streaming live on kkvv.com, so go check us out. And you'll see exactly who I'm talking to. And as always, I always hold up the book so you can see if it's a book or CD or whatever it is that you are able to see it on the screen. This is a book. And so I have the author right here, and we will be talking to him. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in every Saturday at 2.02 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And for those of you who are listening on the Internet and looking on the Internet, I appreciate you too as well. So continue to tell your friends and your family about Open Book Radio Club. We have been here since 2008 every Saturday talking to you about a book or a business. So you know that even if you're out of state, you can still be on the show and you can still contact us. So please do so. Today I am interviewing an author. And his name is Alonzo, but on the cover it says A.C. Rutherford. That's a mouthful. (laughs) And his book is called Success, and you can see that in big letters. And then it says, the purpose of God coming to pass in life. And so I am going to ask BZ to read his bio, and then we'll start with the questions, and I'll be the first one to ask the question. Okay, our guest, Alonzo Rutherford, is a native of Las Vegas by way of Omaha, Nebraska. He's a wonderful husband and devoted father of five beautiful children. Alonzo is also a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
He's an innovative entrepreneur who has a passion for spreading the good news and changing lives. Alonzo is using his talent to give information to young students. He's spoken to students in several middle schools here in Las Vegas. This is Alonzo's first book titled Success, The Purpose of God's Coming to Pass in Your Life. Thank you so much. This is his first published book, I understand, after talking to him. So you can actually get it. It is published, and it's published by Tate. Yes, ma'am. Tate Publishing. Tate Publishing, which is a Christian publishing company. So, Alonzo, you are here. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Fantastic. Now, what I'm going to do is ask you to actually lean into the mic yes, so that they can pick it up Certainly. and not um, be straining to hear you. Yes, we have questions for you, as you know. Thank you, sir. And the first one is, why did you write this book, and who will it help? Well, why did I write the book, and who will it help? I was going through a lot of pain at the time that I actually penned this particular book. Um, and writing was always a, a means of therapy for me. Uh, so I began to write the book as a means to, you know, minister to myself, you know, more or less. Uh, and it really began to minister to me as I began to go through each step and each chapter. And the words were just leaping off the page to me. And if it can help anybody else, uh, and I believe it will. It's a very general general read because um, everybody goes through pain. Everybody struggles. Everybody has questions as to what their purpose in life is. Do I even have a purpose? Uh, why am I going through this? Uh, why am I going through that? We all have questions, and we all grope for understanding uh, at a time or another in life. And we need to have a point of reference to say, oh, this is why I'm going through this, or perhaps maybe this is why I had to go through this. And also, you know, while we are on the path, again, um, we have to we have to be able to endure. We have to be able to know. We always have to have, you know, some sort of reference that we can, you know, turn to, uh, because all our learning won't come from the Bible. It won't come from church. There are some empirical um, uh, instances or, or, or experiences that we have to go through uh, that teach us the best. And while traversing, you know, from bondage to blessing, from your past to your promise, um, we need all the help we can get. So this is my effort and my contribution to help those uh, who are making the same pilgrimage that I made uh, from Egypt to Canaan. Fantastic. Now you're saying that, and I'm sitting here looking at you and saying to myself, Okay, maybe he's 35, maybe, and so he's talking about all of this stuff that he has went through, and he was in pain, and I wrote this book, and the book is excellent, and there's there's chapters in there that just kind of blew me away, you know, the titles of the chapters, and so I can understand, and I know why, and it will help other people, but, you know, you, you would think that a person in, at your age wouldn't have that much wisdom. One of the things I like about what you just said is that you're not going to get everything from the Bible. Sure. Do you know how many people that are Christians believe that all they have to do is go to church and hear the pastor, get that intake, and now they're on their way to heaven and that's all they have to do? And they and, and when things go wrong, then they fall sure. because they're thinking, well, you know, well, the Bible said, it also says that we would go through trials and tribulations. Oh, yes. So you saying that oh, makes it excellent. Yes, I'll let you go ahead. Now, your first chapter begins with understanding your inheritance. Certainly. So why is that important to you? Well, first and foremost, I believe having the proper understanding of what your all-encompassing inheritance is uh, so that you can gauge, even before you begin, is this really worth it? You know, uh, Is this worth the pain, the suffering, uh, the agony, the heartache that I you know, must endure? Is it worth it? And if you decide that the inheritance of God, which in my opinion is well worth every heartache, um, if you decide at that point this is what I want to do, then you can know what to expect as well. Again, because it would be a shame for you not to receive things that God has uh, ordained that you have and for you not to even uh, be knowledgeable as to what it is that you are entitled to. 
uh, I believe you cheat yourself when you don't understand the purpose and the plan of God for you and what it is that he has for you. And it's not limited to material. Uh, the Bible refers to that Holy Spirit, uh, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Uh, in, the, in, 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 in Romans, it talks about that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. So it's not just limited you know, to how much material I can right. gather, but the Spirit of grace himself is our inheritance, first and foremost. And as he begins to move in your life and he begins to open doors and opportunities, um, and this is a prime example, as he begins to open doors and opportunities uh, for you, uh, then the success uh, that you've gotten on the inside begins to manifest on the outside. Uh, so again, it, it's very important that we understand everything that God has for us, uh, again, so we can gauge uh, in our own experience, in our own mind, in our own spirit, is this well, is this worth it? Uh, am I wasting my time? And again, so you know what to expect and what not to expect, so you're not expecting God to do something that he said you're supposed to do, and vice versa. So in other words, uh, you need to know the rules of engagement. Huh? Certainly, certainly. When you go into that job, certainly. you need to know what, what to expect yes, of them and, and what they expect of you. Yes, that is awesome. I like the fact that that was your first chapter because certainly. once you know, then you can go. Certainly. Go forth, definitely. So now with that, I'm saying that the title of your book, is success. Does that pertain to the inheritance that we have in the future, or will that be something that's taking place now? And a lot of people, again, when we go back to the Christianity, okay, I'm going to church and I'm serving the Lord. When I die, I'm going to heaven. And, and that's it, you know. Right. But what happens now? What happens sure. today? How do you live now? Sure. And are we going to be here for, say, 80 years in misery right. until right. we die and go to heaven? Right. So. Right. Does this success pertain to that? Most certainly, and I'll be glad to uh, speak on that uh, briefly. The Bible, it refers uh, in Scripture, uh, and it tells us, I wish above all that you would prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. And the fact that our prosperity, it, it comes from God. Essentially, it's God-given. The Bible says that God gives us power to attain wealth. Mm -hmm. And so it is rooted in God, and God, because uh, he's vast in his dimensions, he's not temporal, he's eternal. Uh, so our success, because it is uh, derived from God, it is given by God, our success is rooted in God. So our success is not merely temporal, but it is also eternal, like the character of the giver of success. Uh, so it's not basically just what you can do down here, uh, of course, but uh, it's, it's, a, um, it's for a meantime and uh, for the hereafter, yeah. uh, of course, because God doesn't want us, you know, just to be living hand to mouth down here, mm -hmm. uh, as we, because we're His children, and how can we spread the gospel uh, if we're doing worse than, you know, the people that we're trying to proselytize to, right. and the exactly. people that we're trying to convert? Um, and again, I, I appreciate the question. Very, very good question, because a lot of times, even in early on in my walk, you know, I thought, well, the less that I had, or the more I suffered, um, you know. Uh, due to certain things or certain lack or certain circumstances that, you know, God would be more pleased with me. Um, because, of course, we always revert back to uh, the, the place in Scripture where it talks about the rich man entering into heaven. It's harder, uh, you know, it's easier to put a camel through the eye of a needle and all that good stuff. But, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I, I kind of had to uh, stifle my aspirations and my drive, which was God-given at the time. So I'm, I was learning, you know, uh, trial and error, you know, at the time I was learning. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and God wants us to go for the gusto. I believe with, with all my heart because God made me, he, he knew me, he formed me from the dust of the ground, and he gave me my purpose. Um, the Bible says in Second Timothy 1 and 9, uh, who have saved us and called us with a holy calling, uh, not according to works, but according to his purpose and grace, which was given us uh, in God by Christ Jesus before the world began. Uh, so I was given purpose, you were given purpose, everyone in this room was given purpose before they were even a twinkle in their grandmother's eye. Mm -hmm. uh, and so... Uh, manifestation uh, of success uh, now becomes uh, the purpose of God coming to pass in our life. You yes, know? yes, yeah. exactly. And I, I truly believe that when you start doing his will, his way, yes, he's going to open up those doors, and you are going to be successful. Yes, and it doesn't always have to be materialistic. Exactly. And a lot of people think that, and so you hear the prosperity preachers talking about you're going to get your car back and right, right. your home and all that. Right. But it, when you really serve in God, it's not even about that. And then he says, if you seek me first, all things will follow. And in my life, yes, 
that's what's happened. Yes, everything is falling. Everything is falling into place, and he's given me more than I asked for. Sure. You know, I said I wanted to. I, I just moved recently, and I had lost my home, and I was living with some people. And when I got ready to look for a home, I said I want, you know, a nice place with a bathtub because after you get to be a senior and you look in senior areas, <laughs> they don't they don't have no bathtub. They got the showers. You know, right. I'm gonna say this on the air. So every place I looked beautiful, yes, but they had showers, and I was like, I'm not taking it. Right. And my daughter said, You mean to tell me you're gonna pass up a beautiful place mm -hmm. because they don't have a bathtub? I said, That's right. Yes, so That's anyway, right. when he did give me what I asked for, when I finally said, You know, I'm not gonna even look anymore, yes, Lord, I'm giving it to you. Mm -hmm. Not only did he give me a two bedroom with two full baths, one of the tubs have a jet tub. Now <laughs> see what I'm talking about? <laughs> see the glory of the yes, Lord. He yes, went yes, above yes, and beyond. And beyond. I wouldn't have even thought about finding a place like that. Yes, ma'am. Yes, so, but I'm seeking him first. That's right. So we're saying, listeners, that's what you have to do. Exactly. And in your book, you're breaking it down to where these are the steps that you have to follow. So I'm saying that this is definitely one of the books that you want to get. It talks about the journey, why you're here. It talks about when you are dealing with something, you know, how do you deal with it. This is so important to know how to do that. And most teachings, like you said from the Certainly. Bible, is not telling you step by step how to deal with it. Certainly. So that is awesome. And if I can, Miss Ward, can I, can I just make a reference to the book that I think is pertinent? Yes, definitely. Said. Um, again, I, I'm, I'm not... Uh, celebrating poverty. Uh, I'm not celebrating, you know, not being accomplished. Uh, it's a, it's it's an, it's a happy medium, and you have to prioritize. Barbara said it uh, very well, you know, when she quoted Matthew 6 and 33 about seeking you first. We have to prioritize, and I believe that is the bottom line. We have to prioritize. Uh, and again, as she had said it earlier, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And God doesn't mind you. Again, I make reference to, to something I had written in the book, or written in the book rather. He doesn't mind you uh, being the greatest as long as you don't mind being the least. Because uh, Jesus said you know, to his disciples, you know, because they were bickering over who was going to be the greatest. And he said, well, as a Jedi mind trick, you know, <laughs> I like to call it a Jedi mind trick. He said, well, the greatest of you is going to be the least of you. You know, so God doesn't mind you being the greatest as long as you don't mind being the least. Right, know? exactly. Um, so, see, you know, see the terms that he's saying. You got to get this book. <laughs> now, see, the question I was going to ask, you already answered it in full. <laughs> and now I see another, and it's sort of kind of hidden home to where I come from when I'm witnessing the people, mm -hmm. which is the gray area. Right, right. And. Right. I usually I don't pull punches or bite my tongue, right. and for all intents and purposes, I look at the gray area as the hypocrite's excuse. Right, right. So, what is your meaning of the gray area? Right. Well, I like to define gray areas of anything that stands in your way uh, from accomplishing not only your God-given goal, but whatever aspirations that you have. Uh, again, it might be education that's standing in your way. It might be opportunities. It might be past. It might be your history. It might be pain. It, you know, it might be lack of resources. It might be sin. Whatever standing in your way to accomplishing or and standing in the way between uh, your ideal and God's ideal design for our lives, those are gray areas. And sometimes a lot of people just want to ignore, you know, certain struggles and certain things that you have to overcome in life. And listen, life happens. You can't stop life from happening, but you can let the happenings in life stop you from living, and that's what we cannot do. And so I, I am an advocate for acknowledging the gray areas, not allowing them to uh, debilitate you or paralyze you, uh, but um, – Ultimately, we have to acknowledge them and believe beyond them, again, tapping into the power of faith, uh, because, of course, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And so we have to, by the exercising of our faith, believe beyond the challenges, because everyone in this room has had challenges in their life that stood in between them presently and their ideal self or accomplishing the goal that God had uh, preordained and predestined for them to uh, achieve. Uh, and that's 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 a real picture. That's that's a real experience that, you know. Well, we're going to take a few seconds to go to our sponsor who sponsors this show and we'll be right back. American Family Insurance believes your dreams are what matter most. That's why we offer affordable ways to protect them. My dream is to own a second car and a house with a two-car garage to keep it in. My dream is to start my own business and make my son my first employee. Whatever your dream, we can help protect it. Learn more at AmFam.com or contact your local agent. Your dream is out there. Go get it. We'll protect it. 
This is Brenda Ward from Open Book Radio Club, and I recommend Julia C. Bennett at American Family Insurance. You can reach her at area code 702-395-1179. That's 702-395-1179. Or go to her website at juliacbennett.com. That's J-U-L-I-A-C-B-E-N-N-E-T-T.com. She will be delighted to help you with all of your insurance needs. That's American Family Insurance. We're back, and we are talking to the author of Success, The Purpose of God Coming to Past in Life. In other words, he can come to you in your life today, and that's what this book is about. And it's about the success, you know, living the life that God wants you to live and being successful, not the way the world sees it, but the way God sees it. So we will continue with the questions, and I do have one that talks about the world. So uh, let me see if I can find that. Hmm, where is it? Where is it? <laughs> okay. Uh, he put the finger up. Okay, I see it. Do you, <laughs> do you feel that many people wrestle with worldly ambitions rather than godly traditions? Oh, Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Hands down, I believe that we all have, because it's a learning process, because when we're birthed, when we're born, we're brought up in a society, even a culture, even a house, you know, that teaches you be all you can be, get all you can get, uh, get while the getting is good, more or less. Uh, so we all have this idea of having the, the picket fence, the nice house, you know, the cat and the dog, the wife, you know, so we all have this, this image, you know, ingrained in us, uh, engraved in our psyche. And so this is what we strive for uh, subconsciously as we grow and as we develop. Uh, if I can share, you know, um, a slice of life. I was 19. Uh, I got married at 19, so it was maybe around 20 or 21. Uh, I was working um, uh, in a pilot program uh, that was state-run. Um, I was working with the uh, Division for Aging and Disability. I was I was ADRC specialist. And um you know, I was due to be in Washington for the annual conference there uh, for aging and uh, the disability, uh, the disabled community, rather. And um, I told my boss, which was, you know, an acquaintance, you know, mm -hmm. I told him upon hire, I don't work Sundays. I can't work Sundays. I'm a preacher. I'm not going to tell, you know, people not to work on Sundays and you find me working on Sundays. I said, I can't do it. And so we agreed. We come to this juncture now. I have to be in Washington, D.C. And what day does my flight leave? It leaves on a Sunday, and uh, he and I couldn't come to a happy medium. I tried everything. I said, I'll pay for the ticket. Uh, let me leave uh, on a red-eye Sunday night, Monday morning, and he wouldn't do it. And so I had to resign ultimately, um, and I was going through a hardship at the time, and so uh, I was I needed every dollar I could get. Yeah. I was just having kids. I had two children. I had just lost my apartment. I was sleeping in my mom's place, and, you know, it was a two-bedroom apartment. Uh, my wife, myself, and my two two kids sleeping on, on the floor for two years, you know, in a room the size of a jail cell. And so I really didn't want to, to lose this job because I was I was I was going through a whole lot at the time, and I had to resign. I tendered my resignation, and I remember being being broken and frustrated. You know, my ability to provide for my family uh, it was severely and it, it was being impeded upon, and so I didn't understand. God, I'm trying to do the noble thing, take care of my family, carve my initials on the earth, more or less. That I was here, you know, do something great, you know, be somebody, you know, at the ripe old age of 21, right? So, and so when I resigned and I ran to the bathroom because, you know, I. I couldn't understand it. Here I was again at this juncture, uh, unemployed, the you know, responsibility of a, of a wife and two children on my shoulders. God, what are you doing? Tears just began to leap out of my face, uh, and, and I didn't understand it. I can, I, I can remember hearing God's voice, uh, clarity. And any time you hear God's voice, it's a moment of clarity, and you remember it because uh, it, it's sobering. And he spoke to me, and he said, it is better to become something in the hand of God rather than in the eyes of man. And I said, okay, yes, sir. It still didn't make the pain go away. It didn't anesthetize me from my pain because it still hurt like all get out. Uh, and I still had to work my way through the trouble. Uh, but, again, like I say, people, 
your average show would have kept the job and said, you know, Lord, I'll see you when I see you. Uh, but again, going back to being able to prioritize, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. seek ye first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness and all these things. They'll be added to you, yes. and I'm I'm living proof of that. God is now uh, adding some things yes. to God be the glory, and, and 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 it's not without struggle and it's not without trial, but He is adding things. And again, you have to be able to endure. Everything in the gospel is not peachy king. Um, again, we have these uh, grand notions of what salvation is supposed to be. Well, I'm, we get excited about being adopted into the family of Christ, and mm-hmm. I'm God's kid, and I deserve it. And you do, but at the same time, God wants to ch- check your motives. God yes. wants to know, why are you really serving me? Yes. So I'm going to withhold my goodness from you initially just to prove you, mm-hmm, because a lot of people sign on because the benefits. Right. Uh, Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so again, uh, God, uh, He's a master trier. Yeah, he's, yeah. yeah he, he'll try you in a minute, um, and He'll take you through some things uh, that will make you want to duck tail and run, rescind your uh, initial uh, faith uh, confession. You know? yeah. uh, but again, you know, like I say, uh, we have to be mindful. Okay. Well. Um, if you look at that window, you'll see it's two minutes and it's getting ready to be taken down and be one minute. I do have one question to ask you. If someone wanted to get your book, how do they go about getting it? We want to make sure that gets in before we go off the yes, air. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we would go on the Tate Publishing website. And it's on the Tate Bookstore. You would go to the bookstore, and you would look up success by the title, or you would look success up by the ISBN number. I'm reaching here for some resources. I'm sorry. Uh, The ISBN number for the book success is uh, 978-1-629-02-937-5. Again, and that's uh, success. Uh, the purpose of God coming to pass in life, and it is available on the Tate Publishing Bookstore and uh, 9.99. Okay. Well, I want to okay. thank you for coming in. Um, as I told my co-host, sometimes we get down to all right. the questions, and sometimes <laughs> right. we do we not. <laughs> we want to thank the listeners for tuning in to Open Book Radio Club, and ask that you tune in next week um, to see who we have—a book, a music, or a business. Thank you so much for coming thank in, you for and me. Uh, enjoyed your book. And Bless we'll Lord. talk to the listeners next week. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in every Saturday at 2.02 p.m. to Open Book Radio Club, where like-minded people tell their stories. Poets, authors, small businesses, spoken word, and music writers come together as a community. So don't forget, tune in every Saturday at 2.02 p.m to Open Book Radio Club. God is still on the throne and prayer changes things. This is Brother Hutchings inviting the listeners to these stations to another Watchman on the Wall program of Southwest Radio Church